When I hear the Palaszczuk Labor government say they value integrity, I'm reminded of Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said, the louder he talked of his honour, the faster we counted our spoons. The more this government says it's honest, the more they're coming up cost of living hikes and out of control order, crime. Order, order. Speaker. Thank you. Member for Richshaw, can I ask you to take a seat? I'll hear the member for Evans. The member for Logan is speaking directly to the member, not through the chair, and actually abusing and bullying her. Um, <laughs> Order members, this is a man, order members. This is a man that is bullying a woman. For Evan, what is your point of order? Exactly that, that he's, he, he, is, he is dealing member, directly there, with the member. There is no point of order. Chair. There is no point of order. I'll ask you to take a seat, members. The member from Richdor has a call. Thank you, Ma Madam Deputy Speaker. The more this government says it's honest, the more they cover up, cover up cost of living hikes and out of control crime and poorer service delivery hurt Queenslanders. I've also listened to the interactions of members officer, including the member and the Minister for Education, including some who have uh, been loudly shout, trying to shout me down. And what I'll say is this government's learnt nothing. You've just seen a damning report from Coldrake, the Coldrake Review, which talked about entrenched fear, which talked about bullying, which talked about intimidation of the public sector in Queensland. And yet we see those who are their political masters, unfortunately, who have learnt nothing and continue to promulgate this disgraceful culture of bullying and intimidation. Actions, not words, are what we count to measure this government's honesty and integrity. And the last eight years of this government shows they are not doing what they say and their words don't match their actions and their inaction on things that matters to Queenslanders comes at a great cost. There have been countless reviews, many sparked by some of those brave whistleblowers I've just heard members opposite run down and try to say that they were discredited, and yet they are the ones who spoke out and are the reason why there have been a number of these reviews and has resulted in the Coldrake Review. There's been a multitude of reviews, but not all recommendations have in fact been enacted, despite the government saying that they would. And there is no transparency about when they're going to do that. I'll call it a, a roulette of reviews. Good luck. You never know which one's going to come through. Uh, they say they adopt them. It's all a bit of a mystery of inertia. But this government has a culture of bullying, a culture of shooting the messenger, which has just been re-emphasised here in this House when matters such as the former State Archivist were raised and there was an attack launched by a Minister of the Crown against him. And there's been a grindingly slow pace to act on recommendations for these multi multiple reviews into damning integrity issues. Announcing reviews under the government buys time, but they've learned nothing about how, but they've learned nothing about actually implementing matters of integrity in a timely way. They're desperate to hold on to power, not how to serve with openness and the honesty that the people and our public service deserve. And Queenslanders are paying that price. And our public sector has been, our public servants have been labouring under this culture of entrenched fear, intimidation, words that came through in some of these reviews. And they've often paid the price for speaking out. Our public service should be able to bring forward fearless and frank advice without the fear or favour, without fear or favour, not in fear of the favoured. These bills include some of the cold rate recommendations, but not all of his recommendations. They include some recommendations from reviews more than five years old. And still there's this lingering mist of inertia with this government where we don't know what the dashboard for implementation is of the remaining uh, recommendations. Now, what we do need to see is more detail from the so-called task force of government that is tasked with implementing the cold rate reforms. Let's see a time frame. Let's see the dashboard, some KPIs on delivery and what success and how success is going to be measured and some transparency. So these bills are a bit of a patchwork quilt or a, a cobbled together aspects where there are some measures that we support and think are in the right direction. But yes, there's a dog's breakfast in many regards to how they've treated many reviews and many recommendations from many 
independent officers of this parliament and independent officers who have been brave enough to speak out. But I want to also address some of the reviews that haven't been released yet. And the Public Records Act is one of those. It was handed to government in August of this year, uh, and that came about due to the absolute debacle back in about 2017 in regard to the Mango Cube saga of a Minister of the Crown who had uh, back-channeled or, or undertaken his job on private emails and then deleted those emails when there was an RTI request put in uh, to seek access to some of these private emails that were conducting public business. So the Public uh, Records Act review we still haven't seen. It's not in this bill and we haven't seen the recommendations of that. It came about after the 2017 report by the then State Archivist Mike Summerall, who was just attacked by this government again in the House, uh, who raised concerns about this matter, but the State Archivist 2017 report, a damning report, actually wasn't released publicly until 2022. Do you see the pattern here? They have reviews, they hide the reviews, they say they'll uh, adopt the recommendations, they do some and they limp on into the future and, and, and put out their media releases and say lock, stock and barrel are doing it, but uh, they don't. Now, the Triple C review of the alleged breaches found uh, that they wouldn't charge the Transport Minister as the private email account and emails he deleted were able to be retrieved. But the Triple C Chair called Minister Bailey foolish for his actions and lucky uh, not to be uh, pursued with criminal charges because they were able to reactivate and recover the deleted emails, which included public records. Anyway, no penalty other than a, a brief uh, removal from the front bench and then he came back and tried to claim nothing to see here, nothing was wrong. They just don't get it. They just don't change. All they do is shoot the messenger. How can the public service know that the culture of change that needs to happen has the leadership to bring it about? When the very leaders that are sitting in political office uh, on the opposite benches there are still attacking those brave public servants, those brave statutory office bearers who dare to spoke, speak out. Let me bring you to the Integrity Commissioner. And this bill does, the Integrity and Other Legislation Amendment Bill, does seek to strengthen the independence of this office. But it came at a great personal price uh, for that former Integrity Commissioner who spoke out about interference in her office who spoke out, who was the one who raised the concerns about laptops being taken without her consent and other issues, including attacks upon her uh, and bullying. And there have been reports of a black ops team from this government. It's not all done in the, uh, in the front, front of house. It's done behind the scenes to undermine an attack. We've heard a direct attack against the former state archivist in this parliament, but there were also government operatives who are acting to try and undermine and ruin the reputation of this brave Integrity Commissioner when she spoke out. But no, you won't hear any admission or, so, or say sorry from this government. And this role needs to be act, able to act with independence and not have the interference when she was raising concerns about the actions of illegal lobbying in this, uh, in this, uh, in, in this state. <coughs> And uh, I want to just come to an amendment that I will be seeking to move if this cognate debate and the way the government's put them together doesn't take away our right to speak in the consideration in detail. I will be uh, moving a motion uh, to enact one of the Coldrake recommendations that this government hasn't adopted, and that's in regard to standing back against the Treasurer's power to influence uh, inappropriately on fees of the audit office when this office needs to be independent. And we believe that the Auditor General should have the power to set those fees and it shouldn't be influenced uh, unreasonably and uh, shouldn't be influenced behind the scenes by a minister who can go to a parliamentary committee with Labor members to do his bidding behind the cloak of the public view. And we'll be moving this uh, measure to strengthen the role of the Audit Office, to respect the very real need for this independent office to be able to bring about the, the uh, good work that they do, the necessary work that they do as an independent officer. 
There are many other things I'd like to say, but I haven't been given that opportunity of the usual speaking time because of the way this debate has been cognated. And, uh, well, normally you have 30 minutes, Minister. Minister, normally I would get 30 minute, minutes to respond. Order, members. Order. But that's been taken away by this government's arrogant abuse and the way they bring about that. Or else I would have talked about the Jackie Trad purchase of property. Uh, I would have talked about the Chief of Staff, Speaker. Barbara Gellow, and the grant Speaker. that he received in this government. Uh, the way this Member government for changed Marucha and Labor Alliance. Your time has expired.